Hi, and welcome to Coming to Terms with AI. I'm Miri Bleicher, the social media manager at Coco Hub. I had absolutely zero knowledge when it comes to conversational AI, chatbots, and voice bots. I need help. So I decided to create this glossary of terms even a newbie like myself could understand. So I'm going to be asking industry leaders for explanations about terms, ideas, concepts in the field in the way that will make sense to me. And if it makes sense to me, there's a good chance it will make sense to you. So today I turn to Suze Cooper. Hi, Suze. Hi there. Hi, Mary. Um, so you're the voice content strategist at Vixen Labs. That's right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> that means I, I basically um, take a look at the content that could be used in voice experiences from, from various different clients. Yeah. Very interesting. Can you explain to me what is uh, TTS and STT? Of course. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to start by talking about um, STT. Um, so STT is basically an abbreviation that um, means speech to text. Um, and equally TTS is text to speech. So we're talking about going in one way and coming out another way. So we'll start with speech to text. So this is essentially where your speech is taken by the device, by a smart speaker or by, by whatever voice activated tech it is that you're using. And it's basically converted from that audio file that the device hears into plain text. So what the um, device will then go away and do, say you're trying to do um, a search perhaps using um, Google Assistant, um, the Google Assistant will hear what you have said, will convert that to text, and will then basically conduct a search in the same way that it would have done if you'd have typed it in on the Google search engine. So what it's trying to do is look for the best match with your text. So um, if you're looking for a recipe for, for mince pies, say, which was actually something that I was doing, obviously, over the last few weeks, um, and I was looking for a very specific one, unbelievably easy mince pies. So it will go away and it will convert that into text and go away and look for unbelievably easy mince pies as a text search. And it will bring back the best match that it can find. So it's basically looking for that very exact wording. So then what happens is once it's found that exact text match, the AI, again, the, the, the tech will basically convert that plain text back into an audio file, which we then hear coming out of our speaker using the synthetic voice, so the Alexa or the, the Google Assistant voice. So essentially, text to speech and um, speech to text are, are abbreviations for the way in which the tech takes the audio that it hears from us speaking and converts that into text so it can go away and do whatever it needs to do to then give you a result that you can hear again from your speaker. So it's basically our speaker is reading something to us? Yes, exactly that. And this is kind of where there's quite a lot of work to be done in terms of um, the natural language processing. So um, the tech will just read, say, from a Wikipedia page or from a recipe. So that recipe example that I gave you, it found my um, recipe. Um, but within that recipe, there was um, a hyperlink, uh, which said here, but it was blue and it was underlined. Now, visually, I would understand that as an obvious sign that that's going to take me to another link that probably explains how to make the mincemeat to go in the pie or the pastry. It's a very easy one. Uh, <laughs> a very, very unbelievably easy one. Um, but in this case, the tech couldn't read that. What that actually read was the code that was behind it. And it actually read out the entire link. So including like arrow bracket, h ref, arrow bracket, slash, slash, semicolon, dot, dot, because it didn't know to take that out. It's got no idea of context. It is literally just reading what it can see from that text page. So yeah, there's, there's a lot to be done in terms of um, that context and the understanding and the language around it. Um, equally words that, are, that sound the same, but are spelt differently, the tech won't always pick up on. And also if that um, tech doesn't hear you completely in the way that you had expected, it's gonna go out there and it's gonna have the wrong, the wrong word that it's looking for. It will find a text match for that wrong word. It basically then, shoves that all the way along so you end up with an unexpected result perhaps not a wrong result but an unexpected result it thinks it's right because it thinks it heard what you said correctly so yeah <laughs> lots of work to be done. 
<laughs> Amazing. Wow, it, also, it happens a lot to people with accents like me. <laughs> so yeah, uh, I, do, I do actually think that, that both Google and Amazon are working really, really hard to improve that all the time. Um, and that's, that's a lot of the reason why having these recordings, while there's a lot around data privacy and the privacy of those recordings from your smart speaker, which of course you can delete, don't forget, that's you know entirely available to you in your account. But what they say when they say they're teaching the tech from that, what they're doing is listening to what that audio sounded like and what the, what the tech actually picked up, the converted text. So that is kind of one way in which they're trying to improve it. And of course, they're trying to do that more and more all the time. Amazing. Wow. Thank you. That was a great explanation. <laughs> I hope so. I hope, I hope it was unbelievably easy. <laughs> <laughs> it was. It's uh, basically the way that the speaker understands what we're saying and the way the speaker relates to us the message back. That's right. Absolutely. You've got it, Mary. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you. Thank you for being on the show. Uh, tune in for next episodes and we're everywhere. We're basically everywhere online. So find us. We'll be there. Bye. Thanks so much for having me. Bye-bye.